Thank you for the schut, for the to, to be able to do this here. And uh, uh, and the Rav gave me the idea of doing the daf yomi, and, and it's really helped me in my in my life. All the ideas in the world are so good, but as long as you're gonna do the work, <laughs> otherwise they're just ideas. So you deserve the credit, not me. So so the Gemara speaks about a uh, chilul Hashem, and it says, what is a chilul Hashem? And it says a chilul Hashem is someone that is, they say, may his master forgive that person. People say about him, may his master forgive that person. So, Abaya Ma, Kiditana, it is like that which you saw in Abaita. Vahavta et Hashem Elokecha, you shall love Hashem your God, which means, Sheyesh Shem Shemayim Mitaeva Edecha, that the name of heaven should become loved through you. When it says Vahavta et Hashem, you can't, you know, you make people, you make people, you make people love Hashem through you, through your actions. It means that one should read scripture, learn mission, and serve Torah scholars. And his dealings with people should be conducted in a pleasant manner. And also, what do people say about this? Such a person who does this, they say, "Fortunate is his father who taught him Torah." Fortunate is his teacher who taught him Torah. This person is making a Kiddush Hashem. Oy lehem lebiyut shelo lomdu Torah. Woe unto people who do not learn Torah. Ploni shelomdu Torah. That person, this person is doing Kiddush Hashem, who learns Torah. Ra'u kama na'im drachav. See how pleasant are his ways. Kama mitukani ma'asam. How refined are his deeds. Allah wa ketub omer, about him scripture says, Hashem says, Vayom li, he, God, said to me, You are my servant, Israel, to whom I am glorified. But if someone does the opposite, in the, in the case of this, someone who learns Torah and, and reads Torah and serves Torah, and his business transactions are not conducted faithfully, and whose manner of speaking with people is not pleasant, what are people going to say about him? Woe unto that person who learned Torah. They're going to say, look what the Torah did to him. Uh, um, How unfortunate is his father who taught him Torah. Woe unto his teacher who taught him Torah. And this person, look how perverse are his ways, how ugly are his deeds. And regarding him, scripture says, They came among the nations and they des desecrated my holy name. <coughs> when it was said of them, These are the people of Hashem, but they departed his land. So people are going to really speak bad about someone who doesn't. So we have to make sure we have all, all the right things. Derecheret and Torah. And next, it says that a person who learns, who does teshuva, because Yoma at the end speaks about teshuva. A person who does teshuva, they bring refuah to the world. Let's say this person is sick. And he needs refuah. Let's say Chaz Shomi has a bad disease. They give refuah to that person. And now that they have the cure, they cure everyone that has that disease. That's how great tshuva is. Now, just one last halacha from the Rambam, and then we'll finish off with that. Wait, you don't have a little talk? No, I mean, I'll finish off with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So he said, The Rambam says, a person should always view himself as if he's going to die. Veshema yamut bishato, venimtza omed becheto. And as a consequence, he's going to die, and then he's going to still be sinning. Vefichach yashuv mechat av meyad. Therefore, a person should do tshuva immediately. Anytime he did a sin or anytime he did tshuva immediately. Velo yamer kishaz kina shuv. He's going to say, oh, when I get older, I'll do tshuva. Right now, I got time. Shema yamut chas v'shalom. Maybe the person is going to die chas v'shalom. Tell him she is king before he before he gets old. Ushe Shlomo amav chokmato. That's why Shlomo says bechol etiu begadecha levanim. At all times she she clothes be to be white. So with this we learn in Yom Kippur that we're here. We're going to do tshuva and Hashem will hopefully accept our tshuva. And uh, and and in that way we can perfect ourselves and serve God of tahor tahara and kedusha.
Rabbanim. Thank you, everyone, for attending the Siyam. It's uh, you know a big school, especially during the nine days. Um, I guess first, I just want to start a little point because I'm also doing Daf Yomi. Idan and I didn't learn this together, but especially since we're on the same cycle, you know, obviously came out like on the same day. Um, we're both finished. Um, so there's one very big, I guess, lesson. This is not even necessarily with this with tracted Yoma itself, but just in general, like a lot of times we fail at a lot of things that we approach in life, whether it's a hobby, whether it's, you know, picking up something else, learning more, whatever it may be. So a lot of times we fail, right? But pretty much, even though we fail, like, it's, it's all right. There's a friend, maybe a couple of weeks ago, told me something that it really hit me. He said, pretty much whenever you approach something new, don't tie your confidence to the, the outcome of this scenario, but you have to tie it to, to the, the action itself. So it's like the fact that I went and I did this. So a great example would obviously be Daf Yomi. You know, you're getting up, you're saying seven and a half years, I have to do a Daf of every single day. Like, it normally takes me, you know, a week to do a Daf of Gemara. Now a Daf a day for seven and a half years for Nishas, it's, it's crazy when you think about it. Um, so that was, you know, a very big thing. So even though, say, if you want to start, like right now, we just started a Masechet Sukkot, and it's it's very detailed and it's very, you know, intricate. But at the same time, just the fact that you're starting, and even if you don't understand it at the beginning, that's fine. You you already succeeded because your confidence should be based on the fact that you started it, not that you didn't understand it. And then as you keep, you know, progressing, you slowly will start to understand it more and more, and, and your brain gets sharper, and things become easier. Um, so then, there's one thing, I guess, I literally just opened it up, and I guess a good page to discuss something. Um, it says, In the case of a sick person, we feed him on Yom Kippur on the advice of experts, you know, of the doctors. Rabbi Yanai says, if a sick person says, I need to eat, but a doctor comes and says he doesn't need to eat, we listen to the sick person. You know, so, but doesn't that just contradict the whole thing we just said? We just said in the Mishnah that we listen to the doctors. So my time, and what's the reason? Lev Yodea Marat Nafsho. Is the heart knows the bitterness of its soul. So really, only you know what you're feeling. No one else can describe to you the way you're feeling. And, and you know, the pain maybe you really have from not eating. And obviously, like, I'm not going to say go eat on Yom Kippur. But you're the only one that can tell this. That's between you, you and Hashem at the end of the day. Obviously, the humans who are experts are here to intervene and, and guide you the best you possibly can do. But at the end of the day, no matter what, if you, if you say, all right, I'm going to go home, I don't care what the doctor says, I'm going to eat, and, and say, I ate, and I lived because I ate, will Hashem say, no, you ate on Yom Kippur because the doctor told you no? See, only you know that comes to everything in life. You know, obviously, we're very impacted by our surroundings, but at the same time, everything's always between us and Hashem at the end of the day. Um, so then, I heard a, a good question not that long ago. Actually, it was a long time ago. It was maybe five years ago. And it just like stopped me when I was doing the Gemara. It just like, it hit me. Like, I remember this. And it, and it had a lot of, uh, a lot to do with this. So, so it says, why after Yom Kippur? You know, we just spent an entire, what, 30 hours? Whatever it may be. Uh, doing tshuva, you know, in, in Bit Knesset the whole day. So why right after Yom Kippur? Why do we say, Slach Lanu? Why are we saying, forgive me, Hashem? Didn't you just spend this entire day and a half asking for forgiveness. So I heard a tshuva that says, because we don't really believe that Hashem forgave us. You know, and that's like very deep. It's like, I just spent a day and a half, I don't believe that Hashem forgave me, that's why I have to say, Tzlach Lan Avinu Kichatanu, you know, Hashem, please forgive me. And that's a very big thing. So obviously, we have to, it means like, we, maybe, we, I don't know if that's like obviously the right reason or not why it's there, but maybe we're lacking Amuna and, and Kavana in our, in our tefillot, that we, we don't actually, connect as deeply as we can or should with Hashem when we, when we realize we're speaking with you know every single day that, that we daven especially Yom Kippur like it says all the way at the end of the Gemara uh, you know like for certain things only death and Yom Kippur atone for a person for a certain Avirot for certain things Tshuva for certain things rectifying things between Ben Adam, ben Adam and Chavirot so it's just it was very interesting and just uh, to finish off um, I read something as well, in uh, Likutei Moran, it says in Siman Aleph, it says, "Da ki al yedei Torah nekablim kolat filot v'kol bakashot she'anu bevakshim mitpalim." 
it says you have to know, and it really emphasizes to die. You have to know, like know in your heart, know in your actions, by means of the Torah that all the tefillot and all the requests that we request, that we request and pray are accepted, no matter what. So even if I don't see it right now, it doesn't mean it didn't work. Like what, what it's explaining in the Sefer is that you have to know the second that you pray it, you did what you had to do. You put in your shtadlus and like you have to know that it's accepted. You did your part. Now you just have to go on from there and, and do what you have to do. But not to get down because I don't see immediate results from what I just prayed that Hashem didn't listen. And now my tefillot as a result of this are going to get worse and worse because I feel like they're not working. And that's, that ties in a lot to obviously Yom Kippur. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it, it really hit home. Um, all right, should we go on? Should we go on? Wait, I want to uh, love it, love it. I would say just uh, first, Roshot Alav, Roshot Rabbi Gaon, I will say really two seconds, something nice. First, beautiful, great Chazaku Baruch to the Rabbi and to all the Talmudim and the uh, Idan and the uh, Idan Yosef and Eitan, it's such a great thing that uh, when, we, when we have Siyom Masechet, we feel that we're accomplishing something. I remember when I was in Yeshiva many, many years ago, my Rosh Yeshiva, Rabbi Shlomo Fisher, used to tell me, wow, oh, you, you're making Siyom Masechet? I never made any Siyom Masechet in my life. He knows the whole Torah by heart, he learned the whole Shas, who knows? But in certain people, in their level, they don't... They don't, they never feel that they need to make the Siyum Masechet, but this is not our level. And in our level, we really feel in every time we have these great feelings that we're accomplishing something. And it's, it, it's unbelievable when Eitan started to speak about Yom Kippur and Sukkot, I remember that there is beautiful, beautiful Midrash, and the tour brings this Midrash. There is a midrash, uh, the two brings this midrash right at the beginning of uh, Halachot Sukkot. And the two brings that it says in the midrash, Ulkachtem Lachem Bayom Arishon, where it says in the Torah um, that we should take the Arbat Aminim. The midrash writes, Rishon Lekaparat Avonot, Ulkachtem Lachem Bayom Arishon, Yom Arishon meaning obviously first day of Sukkot. It says in the midrash, what's first day? First day of Sukkot. It says in the Midrash, Rishon le Kaparat Avonot. The first day of Sukkot consider first day of Kaparat Avonot. And the Midrash is asking, and the Mefarshim asking, what does that mean? <coughs> Kaparat Avonot we had on Yom Kippur. So we, had, we have a gap of three, four days between Yom Kippur to Sukkot. So it says in the Midrash, Rishon le Kaparat Avonot. Am Israel, couple of, uh, Am Israel had some couple of days between between Yom Kippur to Sukkot, so for some people they had, they had some Adidas, some Averot. Come the Sfat Emet, and the Sfat Emet says, the Sfat Emet that Admor Migur, Zecher Tzadik Livracha, he brings from the Mekubalim, of course it's Hasidish aspect, and he says that Am Israel, they're not doing Averot during those days. You know why? Because they're busy with the preparation of Mitzvah Sukkot. So between Yom Kippur to Sukkot, Nobody from Am Israel, basically, those the people like us that we're busy running to build the sukkah, running to, to check. Did you ever see in Boro Park how many hours they're spending to check the etrog? So Am Israel, they're busy with, with the preparation, physical preparation of Chag Sukkot. So the Sfat Emet says that according, according to the Hasidic aspect, you're busy with the mitzvah. So you don't have time to do Avera. So one second. I don't understand this Sfat Emet is asking. If you're busy with the preparation of the mitzvah, you're not doing Avera, so obviously on the first day of Sukkot, when you're coming and you're shaking the lulav, obviously you're not doing Averot. Come the Sfat Emet, and the Sfat Emet says that according to the Kabbalah, there is a concept that's called Gdola HaChana LaMitzvah Yoter MeHaMitzvah. You can see in some aspect that the greatness of the preparation of the mitzvah, it's so great, even, of course, more than the mitzvah. So it's so nice that uh, Baruch Hashem, Bachurim, young, young guys uh, like we have here and our yeshiva, Yonatan knows, in, in, our, in our shul, we were really looking forward for five years. I'm here two weeks ago, was five years that I'm in this community, we were looking forward when we will have such a beautiful 
לימוד תורה constantly in our shul. So great chazak וברוך to the מסיימים, great chazak וברוך to the rabbi, and בעזרת השם, may we will continue to celebrate many many more years. Amen. Amen. And Dan was saying about learning. I want to ask you a question. How long is a movie? So you watch a movie, you know, an hour and a half, two hours. Two hours, okay. Two hours. Now that everybody has uh, Amazon Prime, Netflix, you know, Netflix, YouTube, Mutu. Mutu. How many, how many movies you watch a week? Once a day a movie? Right? And then you you go binge binge watching. You know, you watch series like it used to take five years, you're working on right? If you think about it, how many the PIM are in this Masech that they just finished? Mm -hmm. Eighty eight. Huh? Eighty eight. Eighty eight, just like my anniversary. Eighty eight. Eighty eight the PIM is eighty eight hours. Because on the Dafiomi most of the time they do it about 45 minutes to an hour, something with more or something with less, but 45 minutes to an hour you do. So if, for example, you take Masechet like, like this one, 88 divided by 24, how much would that be? Three and a half. 3.66. Okay. Three days. I should know. If you're going to dedicate an hour, 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 hour. instead of watching a movie, do a daf. Hmm. Instead of watching, like if you did it like this, if you dedicated basically an hour a day for a month, you'll finish Masechta like Megillah in 30 days. If you're going to learn for two hours, of course you're going to make it faster. If you're going to like two hours, uh, two hours uh, you know, a day, in other words, do two dapim a day, you're going to finish the shash in three and a half years instead of seven years. And don't wait until, okay, we finish the cycle. Just pick up whatever they are now. Just pick up and learn. The goal, the, or the idea is not to finish. The idea is to continue learning. And in order to continue learning, you need to have discipline. And if you want to succeed anywhere in life, you must have discipline. If you don't have discipline, I don't care, you can have 200,000 IQ. If you don't have discipline, it's worth absolutely nothing. Achievements only comes from continuously putting an effort. And I'll tell an hour. If you think about the amount of hours you put on social media per day, if you, if you, if you think about or measure it, and don't just take my words for it. Don't take my words for it. Absolutely not. Measure it. Take a week. And every time you go on one of the social medias, the Instagram, the Facebook, whatever you know, people do, put a timer on. Run a timer. Every time you go, start. When you finish, stop. Your phone does it for you now. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, it does it? Can't. Okay. I'm sure. I don't know. Show, show me. You, know, we'll have to, you have to show me how to do it. So... Your phone does it to you, the phone does it to you. How about, how about if you sit on the computer, the same thing, or you're watching a movie, or whatever it is. <clears throat> Measure how much time a week you spend on social media. And these are, multiply this, and then you'll see in hours, this is how many dapim of Gemara you could have finished. So don't tell me, Rabbi, I don't have what it takes to sit down and learn Gemara for, 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 for so long, for an hour. I just don't take it. I'm going to tell you, you basically lying to yourself because you do have what it takes. If you could sit down and watch a movie for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, you have what it takes. You just maybe don't want to. You're afraid to commit. But now I'm going to tell you the following. Right now the day, uh, average day that we have is about 14 something hours a day. The, I mean, the, what is called daylight is 14. Two weeks ago it was 15 hours. So don't fool yourself that this is going to stay forever. You know that every day we're dropping a minute now. Every day we're dropping a minute. 
every week. He's going to get now seven minutes per week. Before you know, if, Shab if candle lighting was 8.12 uh, or 8.10 this week, before you know, it's again 4 o'clock, 4 something. Before you know. If you think that you're going to stay young forever, you're fools. You're not. They're all going to come to an end. And when it comes to an end, and then you have to show what you made for yourself, what are you going to come up with? Why are you going to show in your hand that you have? What do you have? Huh? How many uh, episodes of, I don't know, whatever they have there, Game of Thrones or Thorns, whatever you call this, I don't know. Where you watched, or how many uh, love boats, I don't know, whatever they have nowadays, I don't know what they have nowadays, right? How many reruns of Family Guy you watched? <coughs> what are you going to come up with? How many houses you build? How many banks you robbed? You're not going to come up with those things, you're not a Roman. If you're a Roman, right, is going to ask the nation, so the Romans say, we build roads, so you're not Roman, you're a Jew. You're going to be asked a question also. How much did you learn? How much did you learn? They tell me I can't, I can't, I can't, I couldn't learn. You could. You didn't want to. Everybody can. Everybody can. Your job is to start, to continue, to finish. It's never going to finish. That's the beauty of it. If you decide that you are employed by Ribbon Shalom, you're always going to have a job. You're never going to be unemployed. You're going to go to retirement, we're going to give your soul back. But until that point, you've got to put in your effort. And you need to tell your wives, those of you who are married, and those of you who are getting married, you need to tell your wives that that's what it is. Don't take for, for uh, you know, any pressure that's going to be put on you. Oh, you don't spend time with me. You don't, you know. No, listen, I've got to give it to my kids. I've got to be a good example for my kids. I want to make sure that you, honey, get your share as well. Your share is how much work I will put in. And that's going to be your number one criteria to measure if you marry the right woman or not. Or you're about to marry the right woman or not. And that's the first criteria in which you measure if you're going to be a good example to your kids or not. But you have to start. And you can start now. You tell them where they are. They're sitting down here. You have two chatanim here. They're learning the Gemara. They're doing this all the time. They already finished brachot. They already finished Shabbat, they already finished Eruvin, they already finished, uh, what else? Psachim, Shkalim. Do you know how many Dapim of Gemara that is? You have no idea. That's over 500 pages. In other words, look at this this way. They're almost, almost a quarter of a way done. Or finish the whole chance. If you never start, you're never going to finish. And if you're never going to finish, you're going to be in Amaharetz. Now, nobody wants to be in Amaharetz. So, Rabbi stop with the excuses. Start learning. And they get to the rabbi and the kihila. I cannot thank you enough for the hospitality and the welcome you guys, uh, uh, you know, showed us. And it was a tremendous... Uh, Tremendous refreshing after <laughs> all these years that we were, you know, doing what we were doing. It's a tremendous thing, and I'm sure the Bishuta Torah and the welcoming of the Torah, they're able to provide us with a house for the Torah. Mm -hmm. You know, Akadosh Baruch Hu ever chavim on all of us, mm -hmm. and will will save us from this time. And maybe Tishma, maybe until Shavu Abba, you know, you said you're gonna, you're already five years in, in this community, Rabenu. Be'ezat Hashem, then nachu niyot chamesh mo chana ba'aretz. You know, Mashiach will come and everything is going to be okay. But until then, we need each and every one of you. We need you guys to continue and we need anybody else to be on board. Next time, Ben Zot Hashem, when they do Siyum Masechet, I don't want to see just two guys. I want to see maybe 20 guys doing Siyum Masechet. And it's not too late. Don't tell me you're too busy. Don't tell me you're too busy. Because if I'm going to bring you an hour before you're going to give your soul back, you should say, I should have done it. I wasted my time. Don't tell me you're too busy because you're not. It's stories you're telling me. It's stories actually you're telling yourself. You're not too busy. You're not. Take your telephones. 
disconnect your phone for about eight hours a day and you see how much more you're able to achieve. You can get probably another college degree needed to say you can finish the whole entire class. Disconnect from yourself. Be disciplined. Discipline. And by Zot Hashem, I want, I want everybody else. Right now, what, what are you holding in the in the Four tomorrow. Yeah. Fourth? Okay. Fourth. Everybody can join in on the fourth. I'll tell you that. I'll sign on your next Siyum Masechet that you finish it from beginning to an end, even though you're four pages short. We'll do this together in one time, but you have to start. So all of you can start, and you can do it like this. It's not for me to do it with you. It's for you to show yourself, because I know you're capable. You just need to tell yourself that you're capable. And Be'ezot Hashem, I do know. Rabotai, you'll see Mamash Nisimu Niflaot. Right, Rabbeinu? You know, it's very hard to believe what the Gemara says. You know, Guys, I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen it, I've seen miracles with my own eyes. And I can tell you this. People said, test a Kadosh Baruch Hu only regarding my sir. I'm willing to take upon myself as well. Take a Kadosh Baruch Hu up to a test. Also be Kovea Itim La Torah. Chazaku Baruch Hu. Chazaku Baruch Hu. Chazaku Baruch Hu. Chazaku Baruch Hu.